Today, I'm going to be conducting a variance analysis, but this time it will be more advanced. We have to put together a dashboard that will dynamically analyze year-over-year -year trends, and then break that analysis down further to generate more insightful data. In this case, we are working as a senior financial analyst, and we are responsible for analyzing the sales performance to compare year-over-year -year trends. We have the objectives here where we need to put together a dynamic variance analysis that compares the year-to-date performance between 2024 and 2023 based on a month that we specified and break that down by product. We then have a second objective, which is to create a detailed breakdown that dynamically returns the age group for the product with the highest positive variance. So based on the first variance result, it will drive the output for the variance breakdown. We also have one additional detail that the month is treated as a toggle or a switch that should drive the outcome of the variance analysis. If we quickly review the actual data, we can see that we have the dates, the different age groups, the product, number of units sold, and the sales. The variance analysis tab is empty and it is up for you to decide how you want to build this. The only requirement that we have is we have to break the analysis down by the product and then by the age group so you have some flexibility in how you want to conduct the variance analysis. Now that we know the details for the case, let's begin by first putting together our variance analysis template. We know that the very first thing that we have to do is create a switch for the month. So I'm going to create a month switch. And then here I'm going to go to data validation, choose a list. And then I'm just going to specify 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that we can choose between the different digits to specify the month. Now that we have a month switch, let's now put together our variance analysis template. We know we have to break the analysis down by product. So we'll first type product as our first header. We also have to bring in the 2024 results, 2023 results, and then the variance. So this is sort of how our template is going to look like at the basic level. So let's first bring in our product by using the unique function to return all the products from this data set. Now for the values that we want to bring in, we know that we have to bring in the year to date performance. So essentially if we have month toggle to eight, we want to bring in all the data for August year to date for 2024 and then August year to date for 2023. What I'm actually going to do here is I am going to set up a period index and then also set up something called start index. The start index is going to reflect the very first day of the month of the year. So this is 2024. So I'm going to use a date function where the year is 2024, month is one, day is one. Same thing for 2023. And now the period index is going to return date, the year, month, and the first day. Now I want to return the last day of the month because when I use the sum is function, I'm going to be using this as a condition and I needed to capture transactions that took place in August as well. So if I currently use this period as is, there is a risk that I'm not going to bring in August data correctly. So onto this function, I'm going to layer on the end of month function to convert it into the last day of the month, copy this format. And now I have the starting period and the ending period of my analysis for both of my values. Now to bring in the values, I'm going to use a sum ifs where I want to capture the sales, where the product matches the product that we're analyzing. And then our period is greater or equal to the starting index. And the period is less than or equal to the period index. So if I apply it here, I will have all my data. And then as I switch to different months, it will bring in the year to date data for all the different products by the year that we specified over here. So we essentially created two helper indexes to help us capture the information from this period all the way to this period for 2024 and 2023. 
And then for the variance, I'm just going to subtract the 2024 by 2023 to have year over year results of the different products. Let's also set up a total section. And now we have a dynamic variance analysis that captures the sales variance by product based on the month switch that we've set up. So as I switch to December, this will be the annual variance. If I switch to six, this will be June year to date variance for 2024 and 2023. Now from here, we need to create a detailed breakdown that returns the age group breakdown for the product with the highest positive variance. So over here, I'm first going to create another column and I'm going to call this rank. And essentially, I'm going to use the rank function to rank the variance value based on all the variance values for the different products in descending order. So what this will do is it will return one for the highest value amongst the variance between different products. So this will let me know which product had the highest positive variance dynamically. And as I toggle to different months, you'll notice that the rank also changes based on the variance result. Now I need to create a template to have the breakdown by the different age groups. So here I'm going to first specify the product and I'm going to X look up the value of one from the rank that we have here and then return the product over here. And then the category is no longer going to be product, but instead it is going to be age group. And I'm going to use the unique function to return the different age groups that we have here. So we can get rid of these cells here. And I want this to be in ascending order. So on top of this function, I'm also going to use the sort function where I want to sort it in ascending order. So it will now have it in the right order. Now to bring in the information, I'm going to apply this function again. And this time I am going to sum ifs the sales based on the product, which is formal wear. And then the age group, which is the age group that we're analyzing. And then again, for the date, we want to make sure that it's equal to or greater than the starting index. And then again, for the date, it's less than or equal to the period index. Now let's apply this here. And we now have the variance result by the different age group for the product formal wear. We can see that the variance for formal wear here is 582,000. It matches the 582,000 breakdown that we have here. So we know that the result is correct. And as we toggle to different months, the data is currently set to always have formal wear with the highest variance. But in the case that it does change, the breakdown here should also change to match the product with the highest positive variance. So we can see from here first that the product formal wear drove the highest positive variance realized. And then from this breakdown, we can see that the age group between 21 to 30 actually purchased the most. And there's even further information in the data set that you can use to break this analysis down even further. So rather than just looking at sales, you can also look at the units sold and then back calculate the average price per unit sold to provide even more insightful data in addition to this variance analysis. And with this, we have finished the case. We created a variance analysis that breaks it down by the product based on the month that we're analyzing, which we can toggle to different months. And we've also created a breakdown by the different age groups based on the product that generated the highest positive variance. Now, when you update the data here, you now have a template that will dynamically capture information as you add new data. I hope this case helped you get insight to how a variance analysis can be conducted with more detail. And I highly recommend for you to try this out yourself. It will be available on my website for you to download. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I'll see you next time.